What's going on, you guys? So today we're going to do range sum query immutable. So the idea behind this is uh, we're given an integer array nums. We want to find the sum of the elements between indices i and j, uh, where i is less than or equal to j. So we're going we're gonna to include j in the sum. Uh, so we want to implement the num array class. So num array uh, ints int nums initialize the object with the integer array nums and our function sum range will return the sum of the elements of nums of the nums array in the range i to j inclusive so for example uh, let's see so so this would be our nums array and these are different sum ranges that we're gonna be passed so if we if we get 0 2 that means we want to sum negative 2 0 and 3 and if we get 2 and 5, that means we want to sum uh, 0, 1, 3, negative 5, 2, and negative 1. And if we get 0 to 5, that means we want to sum all the values inside. Um, okay, so let's think about this. So let's think about a recursive relationship. How does one how does one value relate to the next? So if we're doing a cumulative sum, so so each successive value uh, adds adds the current value with the previous value. So we could say accumulate accum i each each successive value equals nums of i plus a cum of i minus one, so the previous one. So what would this look like for, uh, let's, let's do an example here. Let's do an example, okay. Okay, so a cum equals, let's see. So first we're gonna start, we just get the first value, then we add we're going to add add values as we go. So plus 0 is negative 2. Plus 3 is 1. Plus negative 5 is negative 4. Plus 2 is negative 2. Minus plus negative 1 is negative 3. So so each each successive value, so negative 3 is the sum of all of the values. So Okay. So now we could write a simple recursive recursive function. So what would it be? So let's let's think about this. Um, let's make pseudocode. Okay, so if i is greater than j, we're gonna return zero. Otherwise we're gonna return nums of i plus some range i plus 1 j wait let's think how did we get that so for summing from 0 to 2 it's going to be the sum of negative 2 plus the sum plus so Let's say, let's say we get uh, some range 0 to 2. So i is going to be 0, j is going to be 2. So how do we get the sum of this? We return nums of i plus some range of i plus 1 to j. So this is i plus 1. Um, so we so if we think about this array, we take the first the first uh, value and then break it off and then and then look at the smaller value remaining, right? So we start off looking at from negative two to negative three. So we break off negative two and add that to zero three, the remainder that we're looking at. So just think about it. every time 
it calls summon range is pulling off the head and then returning the tail. Okay, so let's see if this works. So it won't work. So let's think. What's the runtime of this recursive solution? O of, let's see. So it's, here, we can, we can try for 0, 2. Let's see. So So we first call zero two, and then we call um, and then we get uh, negative two plus some range one two, and then we get negative two plus zero plus some range two two. And then we get um, 3 plus some range 3, 2. And then this, this returns 0. OK, so if our range is, there's three values in our range. And so how many calls to some range do we get? One, two, one, two, three, four. So it's one, two, three. Sorry, one, two, three, three. Right? We get three. So we call sum range. Sum range is called um, j minus i plus one times. Right, so if j is two, i is zero, then we call sum range three times. So we have to create three calculations: time complexity, and also space complexity, because those are the number of, of uh, that'll be the height of the call stack. So you can think for like a big, very big array. Eventually, we're going to get a stack overflow in the call stack. So that's why this wouldn't work for like a big array. OK. But for smaller arrays, it should work. So let's see. If i is greater than j, we're going to return 0. Otherwise, we'll return nums of i plus some range i plus 1 j. Let's see if that works. Yeah, so this is strange in Kotlin. It's a little bit strange. We can say val. Let's call it vals equals nums. So this is a. This is an input to the class. Um, in order to access it, apparently we need to create a, a field inside the class. Okay. So we cannot access. It looks like we cannot access an array input. From a member function, which is just a function uh, that's a part of a class. So this, this returned an error trying to access nums from within the function. So we can create this field called vals. And so this should hopefully work. Let's give this a shot. OK, so that works. So the idea behind this is we've got this array. Like we're going to look at a snapshot of we're going to look at a snapshot of our array. Um, and so when we get 0, 2, when we get 0, 2, we're looking at this snapshot right here, right? From negative 2, 0 to 3. All right, so that's our snapshot. So what do we do? We grab, we pull off the head, and we add it to the tail, right? 
So we pull off negative 2, and then we add some range from 1 to 2. And so then the next round, we do, we do, it's this here. We pull off the 0, and then we add, when we call some range, on the remainder. Then we pull off 3, and we call some range on the remainder. And then, in this case, 3 is greater than 2, so this is going to return 0. Okay, so that is the, that is the, um, let's just call it O of N time space complexity solution. So let's think about how we can do better. Oh, and also think about this first. So we're calling some range three different times for 0, 2, 2, 5, and 0, 5. So here's the question. Um, do we do we make similar are we repeating work so when we call some range two to five are we repeating work that we've already done and I think we are um, so there's some more optimizations we can do for that and that would add that would add like a memoization step so some range two to five is going to be um, we're going to pull off the head so nums 2, 0, 1, 2, so 3 plus num sum range 3 to 5. So there won't be any overlap. So 0, 2 doesn't overlap with 2 to 5, but if we call 2 to 5 and then 0, 5, that's, we're duplicating many steps there. So that's an issue when we, when we call sum range uh, multiple times. Okay. So how could we how could we how could we speed this up? So let's see. First, let's see if this gets submitted. Okay. So this gets submitted uh, uses up this amount of space. So let's think about how we could how we could reduce repeated work when we call say when we look at the range two to five in one round, but then we look at zero to five the next round, you know? We've already computed some values and then we, re we compute them again. So we can add a memo, memoization. So let's call this, let's call this ver, um, let's call it a cum. And it's gonna be an interray of nums.size value. So how can we how can we remove this duplicate work? That's the question. Oh, so we can use our second relationship here. So when we create this acume, this acume array, um, where we add for each each iter next value, we we add the current value to the previous sum. Um, let's think about this. Okay, so here's acume. Right, let's make some space. Okay. Okay. So and let's also get our array. Okay, so let's think about this here. So let's think about how can we use a cube when we call some range zero two. That just equals a cube two, 
right? Negative 2 plus 0 plus 3 is 1. So this just equals equals a cum 2. Okay, so what about um, what about 2 to 5? 2 to 5 so we want we want this value to uh, to the end. So we want these values here. So if we take the sum of the whole thing, and then we subtract off these first two values, that'll give us from two to five. So how can we do that? Um, let's see. So acum acum five is the sum of the whole thing. And now how do we subtract off the first two values? We do uh, QM1. Right? So a QM5 is negative 3. A QM1 is negative 2. So negative 3 minus negative 2 is negative 1 equals negative 1. Does that work? So let's see. From 2 to 5. So... 3 minus 5, negative 2, plus 2, 0, minus 1, negative 1. Okay, that works. So we can create this acume array that, that, adds, that adds the current value to the previous sum, right? So we're, we keep adding. So like the last value will be the sum of all the elements. The second to last value will be the sum of all the elements except the last value, and so on and so forth. And the first value is just going to equal the array's first value. OK. Let's try that. So let's think about this in pseudocode. So um, pseudocode for, um, let's call it memoization. OK, so we're going to calculate a cum array. Okay, if, if i is 0, we're going to return uh, a cum of j. Otherwise, we're going to return a cum of j minus a cum of i minus 1, right? And we do minus 1 because let's look at this example, right? So a cum 5 is 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 all of these values. It's summing all the values. If, if we do a cum 2, 0, 1, 2, we, uh, we take out uh, nums 2, which we want to be part of our range. So if we take out a cum 1, it only takes out the values that we don't want. OK, so let's try that. So we need to calculate a cum array. Okay, so we're changing this up so this equals zero. I'll return a cum of j. And we also are going to need to make our cum array. We'll come back to that. Otherwise, we're going to return a cum of j minus a cum i minus one. Okay, so now how are we going to make our a cum array? So We can initialize a cum whenever we first instantiate the num array object. So right here, when you call num array nums, we'll automatically calculate this a cum array. So in Kotlin, we can do that with this init, init block right here. So everything that within the init block gets executed when I when I call num array with nums, the init block will automatically be executed. So what happens if nums is null or nums.size is 0? So that's one case. Otherwise, we'll come back to that. So let's say we got a valid nums array. What are we going to do? We're going to say acum uh, we have to instantiate. Oh, wait. Um, we don't want to instantiate here because this might be a a zero size array. Wait, let's see here. Copy that. Put that there. Uh, 
Okay. We're going to declare it and then we'll instantiate it here. Okay. The same size as nums.size. And then I'm going to set acum0 equals num0. Oh, vals. And we have to use vals. Oops. Um, we may be able to use nums here. I'm just going to use vals to stay consistent. Okay. And then for the remaining values, for i and 1 until um, acume.size. We're going to set acum of i equal to vals of i plus the previous accumulated value. Okay. Okay, and let's go back to this case where we have an invalid nums input. We'll just say acum equals int array zero, size zero. Okay, let's see if this works. And taking some time. That's okay. All right. So there you go. And so that is that runs a lot faster um, because it's not it's 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 taking out the duplicate work and it takes up a lot less space too because now we're doing let's think about the space time complexity of this one so um so it's going to be o of n when we when we well the initialization of num array is going to be o of n because it has to loop through all the values in nums but each successive call to some range like since it's already been calculated, it should be O of one time complexity to call some range. And O of one O of one space complexity. Cause we've got one call one call to some range on the call stack. We do have to hold a cum in memory, though. So does that mean this is O of n space complexity? Right, because we got if we got a bit really big nums array, um, a cum is going to be the same size, and we need to hold that in memory. So it looks like O of O of one time complexity. That's because array access is is O of one and O of N space complexity. Okay, you guys. Um, I think that is it. All right, and that has been range sum query immutable. See y'all for the next one.